The Hunger Games Three Finger Salute became the most prominent symbol of the Myanmar protests against a military coup. But what started as peaceful demonstrations with a touch of humor have turned into daily street battles as armed forces brutally crack down on protesters. We look through hours of footage to decode the symbols, the superstitions, and the groups fighting for Myanmar's democracy. The Three Finger Salute has been at the core of the Civil Disobedience Movement, or CDM, since the beginning. The gesture was adopted from the Hunger Games franchise, where oppressed people used it to show solidarity in their fight against a tyrannical government. In Myanmar, medical workers flashed it during a walkout from 70 hospitals on February 2nd, just a day after the military coup. Then it spread to almost every demonstration across the nation, with some protesters getting it tattooed on their bodies. It even made it all the way to the United Nations. After this speech, the military charged Myanmar's ambassador to the UN with high treason. But the symbol is bigger than Myanmar. It was seen at pro-democracy protests in neighboring Thailand in 2014 and 2020, and at anti-Beijing marches in Hong Kong. Umbrellas are another common sight at these protests in Asia. They protect against water cannons and hide protesters' identities. Red ribbons are also a popular symbol of resistance. Ni Ni Kin Zhao, a Burmese pop singer and a doctor, endorsed it by putting it on just three days after the coup. In fact, red dominates everywhere. It's the color of the National League for Democracy, or NLD. The party won by a landslide in November's election. But the military is falsely claiming the victory was fraudulent and is using that as an excuse to take over. We even decoded the soundtrack of these rallies. It's the NLD's revolutionary anthem from pro-democracy protests back in 1988, and has echoed around the country since the coup. The melody is from Dust in the Wind by American rock band Kansas. The Myanmar version is called Until the End of the World. Protesters are also making a political statement with food. At this rally, bean sprouts were used to send a message. The faces of the two main rivals in the political fight pop up everywhere. Aung San Suu Kyi, the country's former leader, hasn't been seen since the coup. She's being held captive by the military, the same institution she defended during the Rohingya crisis in 2017. The military was accused of killing and raping thousands of Rohingya Muslims and forcing them to flee. Suu Kyi ignored what many consider a genocide, and her reputation was shattered abroad. But at home, she remains a heroine, known by many as Mother Sue. The villain to these protesters is Army Chief Min Ong Lang, who led the coup. His short height has become the butt of jokes on many signs. This one reads, Power Hungry. Protesters often refer to him by his initials, which spell out a curse word in Burmese. Myanmar's widely held superstitions are also on display. Here, the country's mediums claim the supernatural are on the protesters' side. Protesters hang traditional sarong-like clothing called lungis across the front lines. Many here believe that police and soldiers, touching or passing under them, will lose their power and masculinity. And every night, people beat pots and pans, a traditional way of warding off evil and bad spirits. So far, hundreds of protesters have been killed and thousands arrested. But who are these people putting their lives on the line? A close look at the footage reveals that ethnic groups from across the country have joined in. That includes the Kachin from the north, Rakhine from the west, and Kuyen from the east. Groups that have for decades been fighting the military for more autonomy. The largely Buddhist nation has even seen its monks and nuns take to the streets. Monks in particular hold huge influence. They joined pro-democracy protests in 2007, their robes giving the Saffron Revolution its name. But the military's brutal crackdown 14 years ago left many dead and arrested. Today, people know even monks aren't safe from being targeted by the military. 
Other groups on the streets include Myanmar's nascent LGBT community, and even rival football fans displaying a rare show of unity. Generation Z are mostly seen holding signs in English to draw international attention. They use humor, memes, and social media. This Facebook video shows young protesters blocking a four-way crosswalk by stopping to tie their shoelaces. Musicians, street dancers, and rappers have also unleashed their creativity. Images of the many costumes have gone viral online, like Spider-Man seen here. This princess protest also attracted attention. Young girls put on ball gowns to demand the release of the country's female icon. And artists are using the streets, and even skin, as canvas to get their messages out. Here, a painting shows the moment after one protester was shot by security forces. In recent weeks, police and military have intensified their crackdown. At night, police raid districts to round up prominent activists, politicians, and journalists. 19-year-old Jae Zin, known as Angel, was one of those shot and killed. This photo of her wearing a t-shirt stating, everything will be okay, was taken shortly before that. The image and slogan have become memes, and the young woman a martyr for the movement. Six-year-old Kim Myo-chi is one of the youngest victims so far. She was shot as she ran to her father's arms, her death sparking countrywide outrage. And as the death toll keeps rising, some have resorted to protests like this one, with signs and silence, but no people. Others are not giving up. Protesters are desperate for intervention from the UN and international community. But so far, there's been little more than words and condemnation. Thank you.